Here's a close-up of the stand, well, the top of the stand. And this is the pin that you put in the stand to hold it at certain heights. This groove and this groove lock in to the clamping ring of the stand, so when there's weight on it, that pin cannot come out. There's six holes. You get a total, using the holes, of 32 inches. You could, if just using the clamp, get it up to 36 inches, but you have no safety feature. Once it's in, the grooves act as a bearing. If the tube were to turn, it would turn smoothly. I ran into some trouble mounting this. It's a very tight fit. I'm sure with use it'll get looser. I struggled a little bit. I knew the bolt was all the way out by looking in. You just have to press really hard. I guess I could sand inside a little bit and it could be the plastic cap on the top of the stand causing it. You could sand that down. But eventually I got it on and it felt firm enough. Shoot as tight as it was. It wasn't going anywhere. It is a little difficult to get off, but I'm sure, like I said earlier, that'll get better with use. As you can see, where it mounts to the base is not turning. It's turning up on top where the nylon washer is. There's some nylon washers, one here and one on top of the steel washer by the nut. That keeps the friction very low and makes for a very quiet pivot. Here's a close-up that you can see the nylon washers or bearing surfaces and it works like a champ. I guess if you really wanted it to be fast and quiet you can put a little graphite in there or maybe some white lithium grease, even a drop of oil, but I wouldn't recommend using any oil. If you can see where the point of my knife is, that's the bearing surface, and there's another one. They're pretty tough black nylon washers. Here you can see me struggling with the handle because I didn't take the pin out. It is locked in place to keep it always level by this pin. Take the wing nut off and then you can move the handle. As I learned here, you can't put them in the wrong way. Nope, doesn't go. This little notch locks with a bolt on the other piece in its coupler. And these two, you can just look down the tube and make sure you got them all the way out. If you go too far, they will fall, so be careful you don't lose them. I'm sure you can use a regular bolt, but these are much nicer and easier to use. The little plastic handles are nice. So I found it best if you screw the furthest one away first, that one, and then that one. It's a little more even. They tighten up real nice and they do not slip. Building it by yourself is a little bit of a trick when you start getting to the 12 foot part. In case I didn't say it in the beginning, this is a 12 foot I ordered. Of course it can be made 8 foot. Now everything there is locked together. I was quite impressed on they got mounting holes on the base, I guess for their monitor stand. I'm just going to weld up a little bracket and mount my small HD AC7 there. And I'll use a 10 foot, 12 foot HDMI cable from the camera. These are the weight mounting bars. 
or the counterweight mounting. This one's threaded. You just screw it down. It gets nice and tight. The bottom nut did not turn. You can also put weights on here. They even were nice enough to include the clips to keep the weights a little quieter. There's a small uh, locking pin bolt that goes through the jib into this handle that I just removed. Sorry you couldn't see that. And then the handle, the counterweight holding handle, has a little indention on each side so it makes it easier to find where it needs to thread in. Then it threads in nice and tight, keeps that thing steady and quiet. And it makes a really good handle once you got everything ready to go. Having those two different weight surfaces also give you a little bit more play on where you can mount your weights to get a little bit better balance. Here's the head where the camera goes. It too has a uh, small, this is a rubber washer that acts as a holder. It keeps that mounting nut or bolt from falling out and uh, works really well at that. So here's the plate for the extended camera since I have an actual video camera. Nice and light, plenty long. Uh, there's a little trick to getting the thing mounted right, which I'll explain in a moment. So this step, when you put all four in, don't tighten them down all the way as you go because the handles may hit each other on the little bolts. So when you see how that one's on the right, that made it so I couldn't turn the one on the left. So if you leave them loose, get all the other ones tight, then you can turn that last one that gets in the way. And then everything is really solid on there. Nothing rattled, nothing made a noise. As you can hear, it's really quiet. So you see it almost points straight down. I think it's 65 degrees. Right here, that bar, the I'm gonna call it the leveling bar, it's the mounting shaft of the head. So you might want to put something there so it doesn't make a banging sound or chip off the powder coat. Uh, you could wrap electrical tape there, whatever you want. But it points plenty far down. And if you put a tripod head on there, you could get the rest of the degrees you were missing. So mounting the head onto the main body. If you do the outboard one first, then the inboard one, it stays a little bit more level. They tighten right up. You see that? how the lock works in the coupler for the leveling rod. Now, I didn't have any weights. It was a little cumbersome at this step. Here you can see more bearing surfaces where the leveling rod goes through the main body. And they thought of everything so it doesn't wear the aluminum out over time. They have a really nice insert there and the washers so it's really quiet and I don't think they'll it'll wear out the aluminum as quickly or maybe ever and I'm sure you can get those parts by writing them an email or calling them up there they are on the top and the bottom I'm sure it's some kind of grommet or it could even be a just the washers. I'm not going to take it apart to find out, but it's dead quiet when you move it. I was really impressed by that. You can also see the finish of the powder coat's really nice. You 
you see these holes on the top. If you get their uh, support wires, it's already set up and ready for them to be installed. So you wouldn't have to do drill any holes in your nice new jib. I found that I, I really wouldn't need the, the, the support wires, but maybe in the future. So there it is, fully assembled. I didn't have quite enough room between the camera and the jib to show it all. Here I removed the middle section so that I could demonstrate the leveling and the panning and I'll let you listen to how quiet it is. Taking the pin out so I can demonstrate the use of the handle to change where your head is pointing. Now you can see you can control any angle you want as you're turning, as you're tilting, as you're lifting. And it's all really quiet except for the end point where it hits the pivot point for the head. So a sample of you could be level, raise it up, Try and stay with your subject a little bit. Say there's a parade walking by and you want to film down on them. Well, there you go. And then pan with them as they walk. Okay, a little bit better view without the mini blinds, plantation blinds, whatever they're called, in the shot so you can see the way it auto levels. It really does a nice job. A lot of the DIY units have the same size bar, top and bottom, but you really don't need that because it's not carrying any weight, it's just carrying the weight of the camera tilting. Here it is, pin out, so you can see how it tilts. And you can hear how quiet it is except for that pin rattling against the stand. I've left the audio from the camera in for these sections so you can see just how quiet the DVC-210 is. Okay, here's a slightly closer view of the auto leveling. and I'll remove the pin so that I can have control of the tilt or leveling of the head. I think you can get some real creative shots which I'll have samples next.